Here be a buried game nobody played before it walked the plank. There be three games bearing the name Captain Silver. One for the arcade, Master System, and Famicom. I'd be blabbing about the arcade game, matey. But there'll be a word or two about the ports. <coughs> Sorry, it's not talk like a pirate day, but I can't resist whenever I play Captain Silver. That said, Captain Silver's a fascinatingly weird gem. It's a challenge platformer taking after the classics while they were fresh, like Mario or Ghosts and Goblins in 1987, but its setting and additions to the genre are unlike anything we've seen up until this point. It loosely adapts Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, but all the other stories mashed into it lets Captain Silver's world stand on its own, making it cuckoo crazy. You're a bored young man named Jim, seeking a life of thrills and fortunes, but you have one wild trip between you and pirate infamy. Wolfmen waltz along the street with sea hags, killer cats casually kill passerbys, and the jesters never get dressed. This town has issues. It's all completely screwy, and I love every bit of it. Even the restrained parts of this game are cool. Not many games let you hijack ships back then. It might not be as nutty once you crash on treasure land, but your tropical troubles are pretty wild. The locals guard the way littered by lethal fauna. Every beast riled up and ready to kill as if the riches themselves spread an unspeakable curse. It's an awesome adventure with clear, cohesive progression. And if I were grading on ideas alone, Captain Silver'd be sailing with an S. Go on, I dare you to do better. No? I didn't think so. Now, what fun's a heist if the hall wasn't hard won? There's a game to dissect here, so with our rusty razor in hand, let's get specific. I mentioned this is a challenge platformer, the goals of which are to test your wits and skills across a slew of jumps, fights, or both. Captain Silver's controls and stages are fair enough to fill those needs. Jim has some mid-air control. He can't turn on a dime like the Red Plumber guy, but he can stop falling forward at your command, making a happy middle ground between loose and rigid. Which is good since there's plenty of perilous platforms that move off a set pace. There's plenty of ways to save yourself if you're cruising for a bruising. There's no blaming the game if you miss a jump or don't react to things in time. With few exceptions. This cheap ass barrel boy can go fuck himself. If he or anything else jumps you, it's no sweat. The checkpoints are either littered with life saving secrets or have shops nearby to regain power. Yeah, you can exchange your score for chivalry. It's one of the first action game shops. This was years ahead of its time. Thus, power loss isn't a problem unless you can't afford the longsword. It would be better to just have it, but I'll take what I'm given by older games. With careful design sweetened by a touch of innovation, Captain Silver has A-grade potential. However, there's a creeping, crawling terror that infests the game from floor to roof. Sooner or later, you're gonna fall through the floor and die through no fault of your own. Calling Captain Silver glitchy is an understatement. It so happens the whole game is one gigantic glitch. one of the most incompetently programmed games I've played in my life. If you fell through the floor scaling the last peak on your last life for no reason other than boo-hoo, screw you, you're gonna feel scammed and walk away angrily to play something that just doesn't do that. 
All the good of a game is sidelined if bugs impede enjoyment. Always was and always will be the case. Especially in an arcade with many other options. I'll go and play Mario. Yeah, that's it. I won't get scammed there. Point proven. Some bugs are poison and should be squished. It's severe enough that it's the only reason Captain Silver isn't classic. Despite its faults, the game's best ideas went to work in later, more polished releases, like Black Tiger. It offers a take on the same concepts with much tighter collision checks. The shops to spend coins, the hair-raising jumps, and the allure of Tolkien fantasy without the pesky bugs. It's mechanically better in almost every way, being the A-tier game Captain Silver strive to be. Maybe there's no relation at all, but the ideas are largely the same. And that's enough to prove Captain Silver's sea legs still stand, a bit shakily. I hereby give Arcade Captain Silver a B-, and strongly recommend playing it once for its special blend of weird you can't find anywhere else, either through MAME or a port if one's ever made. A brief note before we close. The NES and Master System ports ran on much weaker hardware than the arcade. Despite this, it didn't have to be as jank. But it is. The coders of these ports were just as sloppy as the source. They tried to add things to make them longer, but they still suck more than they should. At least the NES has impressive looking bosses, since those large sprites are a nightmare to portray there. Now I'll set sail for greener games. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like what I do, the best way to help the show is to spread the word. But if you feel extra generous, you can toss a few coins at me through my Patreon, linked right here. Adios amigos, until next time.